So my own research interests are in trying to bring the ideas of precision measurement from physics into biology and medicine. And uh, that involves quite a bit of engineering. And in practice, it has, we've had two main interests. One has been to try to develop the biological equivalent of the integrated circuit. So like the computer chip, which has uh, huge numbers of transistors and wires and logic gates, we've been trying to do the equivalent thing for biology, which amounts to making small plumbing, little chips with tens of thousands of valves on them and pipes and pumps and so forth. The other area of interest has been in ultra-high throughput DNA sequencing and genomic analysis, and we've developed some of the fastest, uh, most accurate DNA sequencers in the world. I was maybe the third or fourth person in the world to see their own genome, and so there was no recipe for how you analyze it. They were trying to answer this question of how does a doctor treat a patient who walks into their office with his genome in hand and says, treat me. Have I changed anything? Oh, I'm living much more wildly now. Yeah. <laughs> no, you know, we had a big discussion because one of the things that came out of the genome was uh, they, we discovered a new mutation in my genome that's probably linked to heart disease, and so it increases the risk of cardiomyopathy, and the question is what to do about that, um, and other things that are generally associated with heart disease, uh, hypertension and whatnot. They wanted me to start taking statins, and I began trying to plow through it and understand what things meant. And every time a colleague came into my office, I'd ask them about their particular area and, you know, whether this mutation I found in my genome could be explained by them. And they all got tired of me asking for free medical advice. And so uh, a group of them came together and did a clinical annotation of my genome. And we published that together as a first-of-its-kind paper uh, uh, two years ago. And it has been a phenomenal help for sort of me in helping understand uh, what I could learn from the genome and for them in understanding how to use the genome in their own medical practices. Well, right now I'm excited about trying to sequence the immune system. Uh, we've been uh, figuring out how to uh, sequence all the expressed antibodies in, in, in an individual, and this is something that's quite distinct from your genome, and that your genome doesn't really change over time, but your immune system is changing all the time. You can be vaccinated and your vaccine can wear off, or you can get allergies, or the allergies can go away. And so it's a very sort of dynamic part uh, uh, of, your, of your body and to be able to sequence it at several points in time uh, ought to enable one to measure what you've been exposed to, whether a vaccine has worked, whether you're responding to your allergy treatment, uh, whether you're responding to drugs, whether you've got an autoimmune disease. And Stanford is an amazing place for people interested in interdisciplinary problems like myself. Uh, when we first got some crazy ideas for how we might develop a non-invasive prenatal test for Down syndrome, uh, it didn't take long for the doctors to sign on and begin collecting clinical samples so we could actually uh, try out our scheme. We published the paper in 2008, and uh, just this year there's, there's been uh, papers published with more than 1,000 women uh, who have been tested with it, and there are at least two uh, prospective clinical trials going on that are reporting in the next few months, and if all goes as expected, uh, the test will practically be available uh, next year. And we're starting to see the same thing happen with other aspects of our research. We also just uh, published uh, uh, an example of how to use high throughput sequencing to do non invasive detection of organ transplant rejection. So if you get a new heart, how you can, the doctors can tell if the patient is rejecting the heart without having to go in and physically biopsy it. My name is Steve Quake. I'm a professor of bioengineering and applied physics here at Stanford University and an investigator of the Howard Hughes Medical Institute.